Hey everybody, Hey Hardware here, and in this video we're going to go over Proxmox post install script. So if you didn't go uh, through the installation instructions here, make sure you go through and get Proxmox install installed. And then the next thing you want to do is do the post install script. So uh, the post install script is it's a community maintained tool. It automates a lot of the things that you want to do after you get Proxmox installed. And you could theoretically do all these manually, but the script automates it. So there's a bunch of things that it does here. You can read through this if you want to. The main thing is here, we're going to go into our Proxmox web UI. You're going to click your node on the left-hand side here and then bring up the shell. Now, I'm actually going to do this in this shell prompt just so we can see it right inside here and I don't have to share a different screen. So let's go back to the instructions here. Let's open up the post install script instructions here, the script link, and we're going to, going to go down here to the bottom and copy the install script. Then we'll go back into Proxmox and we can actually paste that in there and hit enter. Now you're just going to press Y because we do want to start the install script and just accept that the deb822 sources are detected. So no changes to the format are required. We'll just continue. Now I like to disable this because I don't have a subscription. So the enterprise repository doesn't work for me. And then I'm also going to disable Ceph because I am just running a single node. If you're just running a single Proxmox server, you shouldn't need Ceph. And if you do need Ceph, then you probably understand um, how to set it up and get everything going. And if you don't, I might make a video in the future. So check my channel, subscribe and there might be a video for it. But we're going to keep it disabled for this install guide. And then we uh, do want the PVE no subscription repository because we don't have a subscription. And I'm going to add the PVE test repository, but it's going to stay disabled. We can always enable it if we want to use it. And then, yes, I want to just disable the subscription nag and then just press OK. You know, you want to support the dev team. Proxmox is awesome. so. Uh, if you want a subscription, definitely get one. And then I'm going to, again, I'm going to disable high availability because I only have a single node. And I will do a video on high availability. Uh, CoralSync, again, uh, this is typically if you have high availability, you want CoralSync, but we don't, so we're going to disable that. And then we want to do the updates. And this can take a couple minutes, so hold tight while the updates are going. And uh, once it's done, we'll move on to the next step. OK, that took about a minute and a half, two minutes. We'll go ahead and click OK. But just keep this in mind after the upgrade, you're going to want to do Control Shift R just to do a hard reload, clear the cache, make sure it's, uh, it has the latest updates working in your web UI. And we're definitely going to reboot. So, And also, a good thing to note, if you are going to run a multi-node Proxmox, you're going to need to run this script on all of them. So make sure you run the script on every node individually. We'll click OK. And then we're going to do Tab to select OK. And it's going to reboot. So this screen will probably uh, give me some sort of error. Yeah, connection closed. So we can actually just go back to summary. And we'll wait for it to reboot. Okay, and it automatically came back here. And I'm going to do uh, Control Shift R to do a hard refresh. And typically, like the most important things are if you've got your node selected and you go down to updates, you can see no updates are needed. And if you go to your repo, you can see that we have like the no subscription. Uh, the subscription one is disabled, and we have the uh, like no subscription repositories enabled. So kind of hard to see actually, but uh, trust that it likely <laughs> did happen here. Okay, so that, yeah, there you can see it's uh, enabled and we've disabled um, the enterprise one and we've added the test repo, but it's disabled. So everything that the script was supposed to do, it did and we're good to go. So let's just jump back over to the instructions here, make sure we didn't lose anything or miss anything. Um, all the way down here, boop, boop, boop. Yeah, so that's it. And keep in mind, there's like 400 scripts. So if you go back to the helper scripts, I'm gonna be doing tons of videos on uh, a lot of these, but there's so many different scripts that automatically install things like Jellyfin, 
or like if you have IoT stuff, uh, there's a bunch of stuff in here like Home Assistant OS, which is an awesome uh, thing to run if you want to have a smart home. Uh, there's going to be tons of videos on the different uh, scripts that you can use. Okay, uh, looks like that will be it for this video. Again, uh, there's going to be some more Proxmox, gui Proxmox guides. So feel free to check those out if you're looking to do some other things on Proxmox. And Local Hake is going to be the site where I have just a ton of uh, guides. It's going to go mostly over like infrastructure things like setting up Proxmox, Docker, how to get basically your infrastructure set up to do self-hosting, self, -hosting, self uh, like local AI and automation, media. So we're going to have a lot of guides with artificial intelligence like Comfy UI, Open Web UI. Uh, like if you have dual GPUs and you want to run VLLM, we're going to go over that. Um, or just Olama for single GPU usage. Uh, basically everything you need to get local AI working, we're going to have that in here. Then we're going to have automation stuff like N8N, and we're going to tie that into our uh, not only our like Proxmox and Home Lab stuff, but our AI as well, and also our media. So, and then of course we're going to do media. So we're going to do the R stack, but we're also going to do like Jellyfin uh, audio bookshelf for I think that's eBooks or that might be audio books. I can't remember, but oh yeah, audio bookshelf probably audio books. Uh, so yeah, tons of different stuff we're going to do here. Um, so you can see if you just click it right now, I just have kind of a overview of each section, but uh, we'll definitely have a ton of guides. I'm working on just kind of getting everything set up. So yeah, subscribe and like, and I will see you in the next one.